We are J Street U. We are J Street U. We are a group of students from across the nation that have individual J Street U chapters at our campuses. We identify as pro-Israel and also pro-peace. The title of our trip is Engage with Israel, Peace, Democracy, and Social Justice. We're here in Israel to explore Israel, to really delve into every aspect of Israeli society that we can. From the Sea of Galilee to the Golan Heights to Haifa to Jerusalem. To occupied territories, a bank, to Tel Aviv. To meet with politicians, activists, protesters, uh, citizens, and really just about everyone in between to find out what people are doing to improve Israel, make this country a better place, and specifically to promote a two-state solution. So I was definitely standing there, really grateful that that's how we started. We said we said the Shafiyana, which is the the prayer for is really miracles, like new thing. For a lot of people, it's the first time in Israel, but it was also the first time of us being there in that moment together. What I love about Israel is that you feel as though you could have a place here, and I love that this culture that you know is all based on a culture that has been around for thousands of years and a culture that your whole family was connected to for such a long time. And I, I love being able to walk around and experience that, and that's why I think it's so important to bring peace to Israel. I'm very close to J Street philosophy. It's very important in this conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. We agree uh, for two-state solutions that must be the solution. We like to, be, uh, to see the young generation of uh, American Jews uh, who born and you are the leader of the, your, your community for the future uh, to be in touch with the Israelis. I heard about uh, J Street and I can only uh, bless you for what you are doing especially in the universities because suddenly people can understand that there is another voice of the Jewish community. The role of J Street is very important um, the idea that you can support and question at the same time. I think it's a truism. I think that don't doubt it for a minute. Um, I think that challenging the monopoly on who can say what and how you can express your love and support for Israel um, is the way forward. Well, I see you as, as agents of truth in a way. That when you go back, if you can share what you really saw, the problems, the challenges, the threats, we are the border. The end of our village is the Gaza Strip. And uh, just over 10 years ago, um, the rockets started falling, um, missiles, waters. Um, and since then, we've been living in a, in a state of fear. So even today, when I go for a walk with the children, I constantly find myself every step of the way thinking, where will I go when there's an alert? Where is the nearest sheltered room? I don't think we've reached a solution for this terror to completely stop. I think our trip to, um, to Hebron was probably the most troubling experience that I had. The policy of, of separation and segregation was, was really, just really stark there. You walk through this, this, this part of town and these are your Arab homes, these are Palestinian homes, and they're not allowed to leave the front of their house. All the homes were boarded up in the front, and those living in the homes could still live there, but they had to exit from the back because they had uh, sterilized a street in front of them. On many of the doors, there was spray-painted Jewish stars, Stars of David, and I guess these stars really struck me because um, they really symbolized the power of the Jewish settlers upon the Palestinians that were living in the area. And it really affected me because I view the star in such a beautiful and spiritual way, and the Palestinians have never seen that perspective. They only see the star as something that represents this occupation. From the security point of view, in Middle Eastern term, Israel is a superpower. But there is a huge danger to our identity as a, as a Jewish democracy. In 40 years from now, it is, it is on the table. The area here is populated by Palestinian farmers. The Supreme Court in Israel ruled that they're allowed to live in the caves that are here. They're not allowed to build anything. 
today the civil administration and the army came and demolished some of the tents here. So he's saying, first he welcomes you and says, you know, thank you very much for coming, especially because you're Jewish. Uh, it's important that, uh, you know, in, a, in such a day where their houses were destroyed, <laughs> you come and visit and kind of you get a first hand a glimpse of, of the reality in the region. It's very common that they destroy the houses with the belonging inside. That's very common. It's sort of been like so outside of my frame of reference that this kind of stuff can be happening. This is this is not okay. Maybe part of the work of, of J Street and J Street U has to be like you said, sort of telling some of these stories. I think that's something that's really that I've really had the privilege of experiencing on the strip. And meeting with Palestinians from different walks of life, those who are very educated and went to school in America and are leading NGOs now, to those who live in villages and they're just fighting for the right to live in their village. Basically, they've broken every stereotype that uh, I think the American Jewish community has about Palestinians. One word or idea that has come up um, has been the idea that sort of everyone has a narrative uh, and that it's, you know, it's really possible to look at the whole conflict from totally different perspectives and really have it kind of make sense. Jerusalem is Jerusalem when it speaks in multiple voices. Jerusalem is a bi-national city. It is not a mono-national city. Jerusalem is stable when it speaks in all of its voices. And I don't know if it's a sense of belonging, but a sense that as a Jew I'm connecting with this place in a different way. You know, I'm not a religious person, but standing at the wall and touching it and, you know, putting a message in the crack and just sort of standing there and admiring it, um, like, it, 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 it was powerful. And, you know, taking a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee, which is beautiful and surrounded by these mountains, and we were there when the sun set, listening to these tacky songs, but it was still this really powerful moment, and I think it really spoke to the notion of a Jewish homeland, that we were all these people, we had just met each other, and yet, despite the fact that we didn't know each other, we all knew these songs that were playing. Um, and we were all sort of dancing dances that we know because we're Jewish, singing songs that we know because we're Jewish in this place because we all know that we're Jewish. After being here, it's just Israel so much more interesting. Israel's so much more beautiful. It's so much more diverse and compelling. I feel like we've seen a country that I never, like, in, in such a deep sense, have been able to appreciate before. That's, that's full of people making Israel a better place that lives up to its values, to its Jewish values, and that's really meaningful. And I just, I think that's a really beautiful idea and it's a really Jewish idea that we have a country that we are always building upon and always trying to improve upon and always looking at it and seeing how, asking ourselves how can it be better and what can we do to make it better.